this five year old child brought with history of swelling in the lateral part of the neck noticed by the parents for the past two years it increases during coughing laughing as well as during defecation what is the differential diagnosis is it laryngocele cystic hygroma branchial cyst or something else if it is so what is the investigation of choice a simple ultrasound neck or with a doppler or shall we go for cct angio or mri angio i am dr sharad balaji today we are going to discuss about approach to swellings in the neck welcome to my channel what is the approach to neck swellings in children you need to find out whether it is solid or cystic either with the help of your hands or in case of doubt you can use an ultrasound probe majority of them particularly in children is lymph node unless otherwise proved that is your solid lesion is lymph node unless otherwise proved less than 1 cm well circumscribed lesions but if it is more than 1 cm it can be due to a simple reactive lymph node very rarely it can be due to tb or tumor but when it comes to cystic swelling you need to find out whether it is midline cystic swelling or lateral cystic swelling midline cystic swelling mainly three in number what are all they the one which is present inside the floor of the mouth is nothing but your ranula second point one midline and in the middle part of the neck and it moves with protrusion of tongue is nothing but your thyroglossal duct cyst and finally one more cystic swelling which occupies the suprasternal notch is your dermoid cyst but in our case this is a cystic swelling and occupying the lateral part of the neck these cystic swellings can be one branchial cyst which lies just anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle second it can occupy both anterior and posterior triangle of the neck and multiple cystic lesions is usually a cystic hygroma and finally if it increases with the coughing laughing and defecation it is vascular malformation unless otherwise proved and it is usually on the right side and it is internal jugular vein ectasia okay so how to confirm whether it is internal jugular vein ectasia or something else let's see how to confirm this internal jugular vein ectasia very simple a simple ultrasound is more than sufficient doesn't mean that you need to have a doppler neither your cct nor your mri angio if you have basic knowledge on point of care ultrasound you can do on your own with a vascular probe or flat probe if you don't have that knowledge you can ask your radiologist friend help let's see what will happen when you keep your ultrasound probe over the neck to identify the internal jugular vein so this is the normal caliber of the internal jugular vein when the child is not shouting or laughing but when the child started laughing or crying what will happen it itself a valsalva manner the caliber of the internal jugular vein is increased and it will appear as a cystic swelling in the lateral side of the neck look at this the real time video of that particular child look at this when we are doing the pressure the child was crying that's why the caliber of the internal jugular vein is increased over a period of the time the child understood the procedure and stops crying and the caliber of the internal jugular vein becomes smaller look at this large becomes smaller so that's it the diagnosis of this child is internal jugular vein ectasia identify with the help of a simple ultrasound probe so we have a case of 3 year old child presenting with the swelling in the lateral side of the neck and it increases during crying or shouting with an help of an ultrasound probe we found out that it increases during valsalva and becomes normal when the child becomes normal it is internal jugular vein ectasia unless otherwise proved 
it is more common on the right side than on the left side what the mother requires is a simple reassurance often misinterpreted as a case of laryngocele thanks for your patient listening bye